We made it, everybody. Welcome back to 31 70s Horror Movies for Halloween, where I'm counting down my favorite horror movies from the 1970s. Happy Halloween, everybody. We're at number one, and people are going to kind of say I'm cheating here, because I have two movies in my number one spot. And I know people like to create rules for whatever, saying, oh, you can't have ties on your list, you can't have two movies at your number one, to which I say, why the hell not? I mean, it's my list, I can do it however the hell I want. They're movies, <laughs> okay? If you love two movies, and you can't pick between the two of them, I say, why do you have to? I mean, Jesus Christ, you just enjoy movies for fuck's sake. <laughs> So yes, I have two movies in my number one spot for my favorite 70s horror movies. And in the number one spot, we have Jaws and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. It's something that I can't help. I've gone back and forth between these movies for years. Do I like Jaws more? Or do I like Texas Chainsaw Massacre more? And they've gone back and forth so many times that finally I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to go back and forth between them anymore. They're going to get the same spot. Uh, the, yes, these are two. Uh, these are my two favorite '70s horror movies. And because one of the main reasons is because they capture ideas that terrify me. <laughs> uh, I've always thought serial killers were scary, and I've always found water scary. I almost drowned when I was a kid. I've been very open about that on my channel. So ever since then, drowning has been my number one fear. So whenever I'm dealing with a horror movie that involves water, I'm on edge. And Jaws was one of the first movies to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about each of these movies individually, so let's start with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Because again, Texas Chainsaw Massacre deals with one of the scariest thoughts to me. You don't know what people are like behind closed doors. Because uh, you have this group of friends on a road trip, their car breaks down, and they eventually, one by one, are led to this house where Leatherface lives. <laughs> Leatherface and, of course, his two family members. This is a family of cannibals. And, again, you know, like, this is a house that seems ordinary, but you go inside and it's filled with nightmares. <laughs> I absolutely love Texas Chainsaw Massacre. One, because it has some of the best pacing of any horror movie. It's only 80 minutes long, and that counts credits. So it's a very quick movie. You know, you have the this group of friends, like, you know, they they hear about grave robbers, so they check out their father's grave or their grandfather's grave. They visit their grandfather's property, and then one by one they get killed off, and then you have the final girl, Sally, who gets chased around by Leatherface, eventually leading to the dinner table scene, which is just pure madness. You like this you know, a lot of people have uh, talked about how Texas Chainsaw Massacre goes down as one of the bloodiest films ever, and you don't see any blood. Um, that's, you know, that just shows how effective Texas Chainsaw Massacre is. So many of the deaths are suggested, and you fill in the blanks with your mind, and it creates the most horrifying scenario. Nothing that can be shown on screen can be scarier of what you see in your own head, because your head will instantly create what's scariest for you. My favorite scene in all of horror, my absolutely favorite scene, is the hallway scene where Kurt is killed. <laughs> Like, you've seen the scene. Kurt walks into the house, he trips, 
As he stumbles, Leatherface comes into the doorway. And then as he's looking up, we get a point of view shot where he is looking up at this guy raising a hammer. Kurt gets hit, falls to the ground, and his legs start twitching. Which is a callback to earlier in the film when uh, the hitchhiker talks about how when the cows were hit in the head with a hammer and they'd start twitching. Or, no, no, uh, uh, sorry, it was Franklin who talked about that. And it starts squealing and freaking out and everything, and then have to come up and bash him two or three times. And then sometimes it wouldn't kill him. I mean, they'd skin him sometimes even before they were even oh, dead. That's... Leatherface just hits him again, drags Kurt into the door, slams that door shut. <laughs> it is such a perfect scene. And it's made all the more scary because we don't focus on where the blow happened. We don't focus on the wound. We focus on the feet twitching. It Most of the scene is shot from far away, but the only time it really zooms in is on the feet twitching. So good. So scary. Leatherface is one of the greatest horror movie villains. Uh, I would argue that he is scarier than the big three. Uh, just because, again, he's so savage, he's so massive, and he just seems a little more real. You know you're never going to really run into Freddy Krueger. Jason, possible. Michael, possible. But Leatherface just seems like such a genuine villain. And of course, yes, we have to mention that he was inspired by Ed Gein. There, we got that out of the way. And it has one of the greatest jump scares ever, the scene where Franklin gets it. You know, it's just quiet, and then all of a sudden, Leatherface revs that chainsaw and goes at him. Sally, I hear something. Stop. Stop. <laughs> and it shows the best way to do a jump scare, which is, you know, you have so many people, they either do a false scare, or they'll do a jump scare where they do the scare, and then they cut away. I think the best jump scares are when you have the jump and then the scene keeps going. Like, you have the jump and then Leatherface kills Franklin and then chases after Sally. So the jump happens and you're still in danger. So, like, when you have a false scare, you have a jump and a sigh of relief. It's like, oh, okay, it's over. When you have a jump where it cuts away, you have the jump and then, oh, it's over. But the right way to do it, like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you have the jump and we're not safe, we're still fucked up. So you get that jump which raises your adrenaline, and then the adrenaline stays there. That's what makes for the best jump scares, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre has one of the best. You have the chase scene with Sally where it feels like Leatherface is right behind him. Again, the dinner table scene, one of the most chaotic scenes. And just it's just insane. <laughs> and again, one of my favorite endings in horror. I mean, I cannot praise Texas Chainsaw Massacre enough. And moving on to Jaws, I talked about The Exorcist earlier in this uh, little list. And um, I mentioned how, yes, The Exorcist is one of the scariest movies of all time. But I've always thought that Jaws was the scariest movie of all time. Because The Exorcist scared a shit ton of people, there's no denying that. I mean, the effect that The Exorcist had on people is undeniable. But then you look at Jaws, from a historical standpoint, what did Jaws do? Jaws made people change their behavior. During the summertime, everybody would go to the beach. They'd go to, they loved going to the beach, they loved going in the water, and then Jaws happened, and nobody went to the beach. It was like, holy shit, you know, like they became so scared that they're going to be attacked by sharks. To this day, you know, let's get it out of the way, okay, yes, sharks aren't really what they're like in Jaws, okay, sharks, it's very unlikely to be attacked by a shark, but it's a movie. All right? I had a movie on this list about killer bunny rabbits. I'm not going into a movie for that kind of realism. But you look at it, to this day, scientists are still trying to undo the damage that Jaws has done for sharks. Looking at it from a historical angle, again, Jaws made people change their behavior. 
and I think that's why Jaws deserves the title of scariest movie of all time. So many people are going to say Exorcist, and yes, you're right. If you think The Exorcist is the scariest movie of all time, you're right. Because that's your opinion, and your opinion is valid. With movies. Okay? Having a different opinion than somebody else about a movie doesn't affect anything. <laughs> but Jaws just, it really hit me. It scared me so much. And yes, you don't see the shark, and, and because, okay, people have talked about this so much, Spielberg made a shark robot and they couldn't get it to work, so they couldn't shoot it as much as they wanted to, and that's what makes the, the movie so effective. You don't need to see the shark. You know what a shark is. You know what a shark can do, and so not seeing the shark made it so much more effective. The opening scene is one of the scariest moments to me. <laughs> Uh, the scene where, you know, the little Kittner kid gets eaten always hits me hard, too. You have some of the greatest characters in any horror movie. Quint, Hooper, Chief Brody. This is a situation where I can't pick my favorite character between the three of them because the three of them work off each other so well. It's impossible to pick anything from them. You want to drink? Drink your leg? I'll drink to your leg. Okay, so we drink <laughs> our legs. <laughs> Even when the shark shows up, and yes, the shark, when you see the shark, it is rubbery looking, but the movie is still effective because, again, the characters are so good. The filmmaking is so good. The tension is so good. I live on Cape Cod. Jaws was filmed in Martha's Vineyard, which is a part of Cape Cod. You have to love Jaws if you live on Cape Cod. I think it's the law. You're gonna need a bigger boat. It's just, I cannot deny the effect that these two movies have had on me throughout my life. Halloween, I, I will always love Halloween because it's the movie that made me a horror fan, and it was my favorite for years, but even when it was my favorite, I mean, yes, Halloween made me a horror fan, but Jaws and Texas Chainsaw Massacre have always affected me so much more. I'm not going to say that they were always my favorite. No, I mean, obviously, Halloween was my favorite for years. But Jaws and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I just, I, I love those movies so much. Uh, I'm going to have to stop talking now because if I don't, I could go on for hours about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Jaws. Uh, so if I don't stop talking now, this movie, this video is going to be way too fucking long. So we're going to have to end it there. I don't have to tell any of you to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre or, or Jaws, because without question, you have already seen them. Hey, Grandpa! We're gonna let you have this one! And so, that brings this uh, little series to an end. My 31 favorite 1970s horror movies. Starting with number 31, which was A Bay of Blood, and ending with... Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Jaws. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this series. Um, I, I'm very happy I made it, because uh, I love 70s horror movies, and I just wanted to celebrate my favorite decade with all of you for the Halloween season. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Um, leave in the comments below uh, your favorite 70s horror movies. You don't have to do 31, because that's a lot, but at least give me your top 5 or 10. Um, again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a happy Halloween, a safe Halloween, and, um, until next time, this is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. Oh,